beautiful. Hey, I am Nikki from Crazy Simple Truth. If we have not met yet, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hey, today uh, we're going to do a study in the book of Proverbs. And if you have not been doing this Proverbs a Bible study with us, then there is a link down below. You're going to want to watch the playlist in order or maybe you don't have to. I don't know. This is just going to be good information. So just stay tuned. Okay. Okay, so this is my interleaved journaling Bible, the complete book of Proverbs. Yeah, it's mine. I made it. I love it. You can get it on Amazon. It's wonderful because it has all of this space for you to take amazing notes. So that is what I did with chapter three, and I want to show it to you. All right, so very first, I, ooh, 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 if you've been watching this, I've been trying to find just the right marker to use or just the right pen that didn't show through. Um, not really much has bled through in these pages. They're really great, okay? They're not thin like a Bible page. I'm a hard pusher, so I've had a little bit of bleed through when I push too hard. Um, I had to learn some lessons there. I still can't not push too hard, okay? But anyway, I use my mild liners today and they didn't have much show through at all and they had absolutely no bleed through. And so I'm gonna link my mild liners below. They are my absolute favorite highlighters. I have tried so many different highlighters and I love so many different highlighters, but the mild liners work the best in the Bible for me. They will show through. So if you're using your regular Bible, the mild lighters are gonna show through quite a bit. They don't bleed always, they're gonna show through. But in this Bible, because I designed it this way, you're not gonna have, let me see if I can find a good example for you. You're not gonna have a lot of show through. Let me find, I'm trying to find the right one. Okay, I think, you can't really see it. I can't, don't even see any show through to show. I don't, I don't even see any show through to show you. <laughs> oh, okay, here's one. Um, can you see, let's see, where even did I use it? Right there, that word right there. Now I outlined it in black, so it's going to show because of that, but it does not bleed and I just had a blast with it. So I'm going to show you these fun pages that I did, but we're going to also talk about Proverbs chapter three while we go through this. So I colored of Proverbs chapter three, verse five. This is the memory verse, okay? And at the beginning of every chapter, there is a memory verse, and it is a verse that I picked that I think we should hide in our heart. And so that is the one that I chose. Okay, next, I went through the observation, okay? So this is where I show you how to look closely at what it says. What exactly does it say, okay? What is said about God? Who else is mentioned? Are there things mentioned? Like wisdom is mentioned a lot in Proverbs. Are there, and what is it mentioned about those things? Um, I show you to look at the details. Look at every single detail and make a list and write notes and highlight whatever you want, however it is that you want to do it. I have tons of videos on how I do that. And even in this Proverbs series, if you've been watching, I show you some different ways that I do that. But in this particular one, the trust in the Lord with all your heart, um, I did this video already. So we went through that. You can watch that. Then you should have watched the video where I did the unfolding truth or a verse mapping on Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, one of my very favorite scriptures in the Bible. So you saw that. Um, what you did not see is my page where I actually um, show you, I don't show you in the video because in the video I show you how to use Bible Hub, but here is what I did. It's a hot mess. I love it, love it, love it. Um, here are just my notes, which I think I actually showed you all of these in the video. So I forgot I did go through part of chapter three, but now that I'm looking at it, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it now. I'm seeing it now. So what we are on today, sorry about that. Hmm, imagine that. Nikki got confused. <laughs> okay. Hey, do you like my new background? You guys haven't seen my face. You have not seen my face, I don't think. Uh, we moved like a month ago. We got a house. Love it, love it, love it. It's very 90-ish, <laughs> so it has like some 
oak doors that I really dislike. Um, and this, this room needs painted. Um, it's got like this off white to it. Okay. So I didn't paint it yet because we wanted to get the living room and the kitchen painted. We haven't even done the kitchen yet. Anyway, there's a lot to do. There's a lot of updating that needed done with the woodwork and the painting, but I did get my stuff hung, my stuff because my stuff is important, okay? So I did get that done. So yay, see, I'm in a new room. And yes, we still have locks everywhere because of our little one. Uh, but, and there's like a gate right here that you guys can't even see that surrounds my stuff and my dresser so she can't get into it. But you know, it's all good, it's all good. So yes, there's my stuff and I love my stuff. The fun thing about having my stuff handy is that I was able to do some really fun pages in this. So I wanted to show you what we're gonna start on is chapter three, verse 13, okay? And this is the blessings of wisdom. And so what I did here is if you're gonna look for who is mentioned, all right, wisdom is mentioned. And what you do is you look for the pronouns, okay? So a pronoun is a she, a they, a we, an us, an it, okay? Those kind of words are pronouns and they're referring to a noun. Well, in this particular, if you want to turn your book there, in this particular section of the Bible, it says, blessed is the man who finds wisdom, the man who acquires understanding, for she is more profitable than silver. Well, who's she? We were just talking about a man, and now we're talking about wisdom, and who is she, okay? So you ask yourself this question when you see pronouns in the Bible. And so you say, who is she? Well, she is a wisdom. Is a wisdom? Is a wisdom? She is wisdom. She is wisdom. So Solomon, which is so funny because our new puppy's name is Solomon, but Solomon, when he wrote these uh, Proverbs, okay, he personified wisdom as this female. And really, truly, what he's talking about is God's wisdom. All wisdom is from God, okay? And so he's personifying this wisdom that we want to have um, as a woman. And so every time you see the word she or her, um, it says her in verse 16, it says her, verse 17 says her, 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 I can make a song out of it. So what I did then, because it listed all of these verses about her, <laughs> the her, um, I wrote down the list here of everything that I could see about wisdom. So this is what I wrote down based on verses 13 through 18, okay? So here it is, here's my list about her. More profitable than silver, okay? So wisdom is more profitable than silver. And not just wisdom, but God's wisdom, okay? Wisdom is better, is, is better gain, it's better to gain wisdom than fine gold, okay? Then it says more precious than rubies. Woohoo! Nothing compares with her. Okay, so nothing compares with wisdom. And if God is the root of all wisdom, then nothing compares with God's wisdom. All right, then we've got long life is in her right hand, riches and honor in her left hand. All her ways are pleasant, her paths are peaceful. The tree of life, she gives the tree of life. To those who embrace her, those who lay hold of her are blessed. Now, who has the tree of life? Not Mr. Solomon, not Mrs. Wisdom. Only God has the tree of life. And so that's why this is truly talking about God and his wisdom, okay? However, when you turn the page, you notice that in verse 19, the topic changes. No longer are we talking about this female, her wisdom, but it changes to God, okay? So I'm going to go back for a moment because I want to give you some of the information that I learned about this blessings of wisdom, all right? So we, we talked about uh, more profitable than silver, better gain than gold, more precious than rubies, okay? So all these wonderfully beautiful, valuable stones, okay? And here is a scripture reference. My hair keeps getting in my eyes. You guys, the puppy bit me. I don't know. No, I think it was his fingernail. Look at this. I'm going to have a scar on my face because the puppy bit me or, or scratched me. I don't know what he did. It happened so fast. He's crazy wild. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have a scar on my face. 
Like I already have a crooked nose because it's been broken so many times. Like I don't, and, and then it's on the same fit, the same side where my nose, yeah. Oh, well, you guys probably like didn't even notice. No, you probably, you probably look at all the time. Like, her, her face is crooked because. <laughs> okay, let me keep going. Okay, Job 28, 17 through 18. So write this down, okay? Neither gold nor crystal can compare with it, nor can it be had for jewels of gold. Coral and jasper are not worthy of mention. The price of, dot, 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 what is he talking about? Wisdom. The price of wisdom is beyond ruby. So this was Job. Now, the interesting thing about this is the book of Job is wisdom literature. So you are going to learn wisdom from Job along with Solomon in Proverbs. Okay. Um, now, the next thing I got from my Oh, I love this Bible. Do I even have it in here? Oh, no. I have it out in the other room because I was using it this morning. My uh, New Living Translation Illustrated Study Bible is the bomb. If you've been watching me, you've seen the video where I did it. I absolutely love it. I think it's an invaluable tool for beginners. This is the Berean Study Bible, which I'm finding is so accurate and so good. Um, I also use the English Standard Version. Okay, um, but the New Living Translation or the NLT is so easy to read. Okay, and the Illustrated Study Bible, I'll link the video below for you. The Illustrated Study Bible has all these beautiful pictures and charts and graphs and explanations and like it's a it's a dream for an ADHD brain like mine. So I absolutely love it. So here is what I learned about wisdom from my New Living Translation Illustrated Study Bible. Wisdom goes beyond simple intelligence. Proverbs 30, if you want to write that down, write this down, 24 through 28 notes that even animals such as ants, rock badgers, locusts, and lizards have wisdom because they know how to navigate life skillfully. The foundation of wisdom is God himself. Listen to that. The foundation of wisdom is God himself. No wisdom exists apart from fear of the Lord. Proverbs 1, 7. So no wisdom, no wisdom exists, okay, apart from the fear of the Lord. So the whole book of Proverbs is about wisdom that comes from fearing the Lord. And if you've heard me talk in previous videos, it's not a fear like, ooh, I'm so scared of God. No, this is a reverential fear. This is a wow kind of God fear, okay? This is the, I can't even believe, like I am speechless, humbled on my knees at, at my reverential awe for what God has done in my life. That is the kind of wisdom that we're gonna gain through having fear of the Lord. And I had not noted this for you yet, but a lot of times throughout this, and, and possibly every time, I honestly didn't look, but so far, every time the Lord is mentioned, it's a capital L-O-R-D. And whenever it's a capital L-O-R-D, that is God's name, okay? Let me find where I wrote it down so I can give you the exact correct information. Yahweh, the proper name of the God of Israel. So L-O-R-D, when it's capitalized, is Yahweh. That is the proper name of God. That is his name name. So that is going to be all caps. And I believe through the whole book of Proverbs, I'm not sure because I've never studied Proverbs in depth until I'm studying it with you. But make note of that. That is something very important to know. Okay. Um, so what else did we learn here? Um, we learned 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 2. Paul contrasts the wisdom of this world. And what's cool is my Bible study group right now is studying 1 Corinthians. So we are going through it, and we're on chapter two this week, although you might not watch us for several days now. So we will might, we'll probably be on chapter three by then, but it's never too late to join. So the link to join us is below. It's amazing. We have all kinds of opportunities through the week to watch pre-recorded videos, to join live videos. There's worksheets for every day. It's super cool. We have a, um, a group messaging thing that we have called Slack that we talk to each other, post pictures. It's really awesome. It's an amazing group of women. So anyway, 1 Corinthians 1 and 2, Paul contrasts the wisdom of the world, which he calls foolishness, with the wisdom of Christ. Paul also says of Jesus, in him lie all hidden 
treasures of wisdom and knowledge in Christ. They are all in Christ. God is the foundation of wisdom, and it's all in Christ, okay? So in Christ is on Christos, okay? And that is an immovable position. When you are in Christ, you're immovable. You cannot be moved from being in Christ, okay? So if this wisdom, if this, if in him lie all hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge, those things aren't coming out of him. And guess what? If you have the Holy Spirit in you, those things aren't coming out of you. Now, wisdom is something that we want to continue to gain, though. It's not like, boom, pow, you got wisdom. No, when you get the Holy Spirit, you are going to gain some wisdom, but God wants us to be in his word and learn more about him, okay? So wisdom is a continual process for a Christian. It's like sanctification, okay? It's a process that's continual until we meet God in heaven. Okay, so now I'll show you this page. It's so cute. It has a little tip in. Tip in. I used some washies. I had fun. These are stickers from the... Um, Proverbs journaling kit that's on my website. I will link that below too. Um, the great thing is I thought, the uh, well, the other uh, markers that I had used thus far in this book, when I wrote over my stickers, they bled onto my markers. This did not even bleed onto my highlighters. The printer that I use and the sticker paper that I use are on my website under Nikki's Picks. Okay. It's a tab at the top, Nikki's Picks. Um, I didn't have any bleed on my mild liners. I was shocked. It was so cool. So I was able to get kind of fun with my coloring on those because I, was, I wasn't bleeding. Um, okay, so now let's go to the next page because I told you in verse 19, we change topics. Well, what do we change topics about? We change topics into the Lord, which is Yahweh, okay? Yahweh, the Lord founded the earth by wisdom. Whoa, psh, mind blown. He founded the earth by wisdom, okay? It says he established the heavens by understanding, all right? Think about that for a moment. He established, he created the heavens by his understanding. Like God's wisdom and understanding, we can't even fathom. We have a finite mind and at God, okay? Uh, we can't even fathom this kind of wisdom and understanding. It says he founded the earth on it. He established the heavens, and it goes on to say in verse 20, by his knowledge, the watery depths were broke open and the clouds dripped with dew. Like, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. By his knowledge, the watery depths were broke open. Broke open, okay? So, wow, God is amazing. Like those statements right there, those two verses, 19 and 20, just reading those and really processing what that says, you're going to have a reverential awe or a fear of the Lord. You can't help but have it because his abilities are amazing. Like we can't even comprehend what he does. Okay. So now 21, it says, my son, do not lose sight of this. Persevere, sound judgment and discernment. All right, so now we've got a new pronoun. Verse 22 starts with they. Well, who is they? Because we've been talking about her, and then we've been talking about Yahweh, the Lord, and now we've got this they. Who is they? So you ask yourself that question when you're looking at what the scriptures say, because that is the very first step. You have to look at exactly what it says, observe every little detail with your eyes, and take notes, mark it up, whatever you want to do. Um, but you're noticing the details. And I'm noticing that it says they in chapter 22. Who is they? Well, they is sound judgment and discernment. So what are we going to learn about sound judgment and discernment? Okay. So we're going to learn that they will be life to your soul. Who's your? Who? Who is your? Okay. So let's go back to... Um, who he's talking to. And we're going to go to the very beginning of chapter three. And he says, my son, my son, he's talking to my son. Now we don't know if he was really talking to one of his 5,000 sons. I don't know how many sons he had, but he had a lot of wives. Um, when he wrote this though, he was still living under the will of God. So he most likely didn't have a, a thousand sons then. <laughs> I don't know how many sons he had, but he most likely didn't because when he wrote the Proverbs, he was living under the will of God. And so he was, Solomon ended up falling off of the will of God, falling out of the will of God, and not living a godly life, 
But when he wrote Proverbs, he was living in the will of God. And so this was Holy Spirit inspired. And so he was writing to whether it be younger men or a certain son. We don't really know. Um, but that's who he's addressing when he said they, sound, judgment, and discernment, will be life to your soul. Life to your soul. And adornment to your neck. Then you, the son, will go on your way in safety and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you rest, your sleep will be sweet. Do not fear sudden danger or ruin that overtakes the wicked. Okay, so that's verse 25. So let's talk about this. I made a list. There's a do not and a do not and a do not and a do not. In 25, there's a do not. If I would have read on, which I'm not going to read all of these, in 27, there's a do not. In 28, there is a do not. In 29, there is a do not. In 30, there is a do not. And in 31, there is a do not. So what does that tell you? Well, you've got a list of these things that Solomon is telling this son not to do. Don't do this. Don't do this. This is not wise. So make a list. Write it down. Okay? However you do that, it doesn't matter. But here is what I did. Do not do these things. Okay? Do not do these things. And then 26 says, for, for, which is a reason word, I told you about the clue words, and for is giving you a reason or a cause, okay? For the Lord, which is Yahweh, will be your confidence, will be your confidence, okay? So the NIV uses the phrase, be at your side. The NLT uses the phrase, is your security, and the Berean Study Bible says it will be your confidence. Okay, so I thought, well, what does that mean? So I had to do a lot of digging into that, and I did a word study. And I'm just going to tell you what I learned. The Hebrew word is kessel. It's Strong's Concordance number 3689, if you want to write it down, right there, okay? And what it means, it had so many different meanings. It was such a rich and confusing word. But what it means is literally will be your loin. Okay, so if this says the Lord will be your confidence and he will keep your foot from the snare, it's like he's going to protect you. Okay, he's going to protect you. It says if you look back up, that verse 23, you will go on your way in safety. Your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you rest, your sleep will be sweet. Do not fear sudden danger or the ruin that overtakes the wicked. For the, the Lord will be your loin. He'll be at your loin like he got you, girl. He got you, okay? He got you. And so that is an interesting word, a little word study that I did because confidence didn't really make a lot of sense to me. But it was one of the meanings of this word, this Hebrew word, kessel, could have been translated as confidence. And really, if you think about that, physically he could be your loin, but he, you could have confidence in your safety because of him. So we have security in the fact that we are secure in Christ, and this is saying you can be confident in that. So it was really such a rich message. Um, I wanted to talk about the tree of life from verse 18. So the tree of life is mentioned in Genesis 2, 9, and it says in the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, the tree of life is something that God made and it was in the garden of Eden. So when Solomon says she is a tree of life to those who embrace her and those who lay hold of her are blessed. I don't know if Solomon's specifically talking about wisdom being a tree of life. Okay, but I know that he's saying it's similar to God's tree of life. I know that. And so the tree of life, the literal tree of life is mentioned in Genesis 2, 9. Okay, something that it says here about wisdom, verse 13. Here are four words that are verily, 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 very, oh, I'm going to do it again. Very similar. Okay, verse 13 says wisdom and understanding. And verse 21 says sound judgment and discernment. Those are four things as a Christian that we want to have. We want to have wisdom and understanding. We want to have sound judgment and discernment. And all of those things come from Christ. Okay. All of those things come from God. All of those things we get when we get the Holy Spirit on us. When, when, when Jesus Christ becomes our Lord and Savior of our life, okay? When, he, when we let him lord over our life, be in charge of it, move in, right? 
then we have those things. But in order to keep those things polished, we have to keep studying, reading and studying his word, okay? So you watching this video is so important because you're gonna learn more about his word. But it's even more important that you then go dig in and learn these things for yourself, okay? Don't just watch YouTube videos and write down what people tell you because I am not a scholar, all right? I am just a girl. I'm just a girl. Is there a song like that? I'm just a girl. I'm just a girl that loves the Bible and I want to inspire you to get into it. So that's, that's all I am. Okay. So now I made some little fun notes here. The Lord founded the earth by wisdom. He established the heavens by understanding, broke open the watery depths by his knowledge. Those are all from verse 19. So I did this crazy little globe and some clouds and some water because he was talking about in verse 19, all of those things that he did based on wisdom. Based on wisdom, he founded the earth. Based on wisdom, he established the heaven. Based on wisdom, he broke open the watery depths. Like, he is the man, okay? He's the man. Um, all right, Genesis 7:11 says, on that day, all of the springs of the great deep burst forth and the floodgates of heavens were open. I have the coolest story about this. Okay, there is a song called Open the Floodgates of Heaven. And my husband, several years ago, was listening to it. And it literally says, open the floodgates of heaven over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I, I'm like, okay, I'm tired of hearing this. I said to my husband, I said, why do they keep saying the same thing? Is that all they say the whole, whole song? And he looked at me dead serious and he said, they don't need to say anything else. Wow. Okay. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. That's the words of the song. Open the floodgates of heaven. Okay. That's from this verse. On that day, all of the springs of the great deep burst and burst forth and the floodgates of heaven were opened. Okay. The floodgates of heaven, like we, we want that. We don't want him to, um, you know, flood the whole earth again. Right. We don't want that but we want the floodgates of heaven to open as in we want him to rain down just life and love and spirituality and wisdom on us all the time, right? It's such a beautiful verse. Job at 12, 15 says, if he holds back the waters, they dry up. If he releases them, they overwhelm the land. Is that mind blowing too? Listen to that again, okay? Man, we serve a good God. If he holds back the waters, they dry up. If he releases them, they overwhelm the land. Job 12, 15. That is a beautiful verse about the power of our God. And he does it without, I mean, he could do it with the point of his finger. He could do it with the thought in his mind. Like there's no effort for him. There's no effort for him to hold back the water or to release the water and open the floodgates of heaven. There is no effort for him to do that. Um, one thing that goes along with the confidence word, okay, so in verse 26, the confidence be at your side. The New Living Translation says that he is your security. One thing that goes along with that is 1 Samuel 2.9, and it says he guards the steps of his faithful ones, okay? Um, when I was a little girl, I was sexually abused by a father figure in my home for many years, from the ages of 5 to, I think, 11, for many, many years. He was my uh, stepfather at the time. And, um, I was scared at night and sometimes still I will wake up scared at night. And these scriptures are very comforting. Okay. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you rest, your sleep will be sweet. Why is that? It says for verse 26, for the Lord will be your confidence. He will be at your side. He will be your loin. He will be your security. He guards the steps of his faithful ones. And you could say he guards the sleep of his faithful ones. He guards us. First Samuel 2, 9. Okay. Um, here's another good one. And this is from the book of Proverbs. I wrote, do not fear for the Lord will be at your side. Here is the scripture. Proverbs 14, 26. It says, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. Okay, so we're talking about the way to wisdom. The way to get wisdom is being in the fear of the Lord, right? Okay, being in the fear of the Lord. Okay, it says that in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Now, what did we just talk about confidence is? 
We talked about it's being at your side, your security, your loin. It's safety, okay? Safety. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. So in it, in it, in is a preposition. It's telling you where something is. In the fear of the Lord, okay? So you've got the fear of the Lord right here. You want to be in it? You want to be in it? In it, in it, in it. And then you shall have a place of refuge. We want that place of refuge. We want to be in the fear of the Lord. We want wisdom. And the place to find wisdom is to be for us to be in the fear of the Lord. And there's no better way to be in the fear of the Lord than to read about him and be in awe, in a reverential awe of how amazing he is. Okay, <laughs> this is a long video, I know. Okay, so there is this page. This page is right here. Let me see if I'm going to go on. Nope, I'm going to do it in another video. So you're going to have to stay tuned because I will do this in the next video. We will talk about a chapter 3, verses 27 through 35. I've got these pretty pictures. And then I will go through with you what I am going to fill in here for the reflect and respond. Because this Bible, if you have it, is based on reading, reflecting, and responding. So you're going to read and like see what it says, okay? And then you're going to reflect on it like, well, let me go back. Mm, 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 mm. That was my best robot arms. Okay, we're going to go back because um, that, that isn't the order. I, I forgot something in this, and it's because um, if I put too many details in this book, there wouldn't have been room for God's word. But it's important that you read it and pay attention to the facts, okay? But it's also important to remember who the author is, so Solomon, and who he was talking to. Because he wasn't talking to Nikki Drake. What? No, he wasn't talking to Nikki Drake. Okay, the Bible was wrote for us, but it was not wrote to us. It was not wrote to us. So we have to not only read it and look at the facts, we have to figure out what do I think that meant? What was Solomon saying? It sounds so weird to say Solomon because we say it all day long. Solomon, no bite. Solomon, come here, Solomon. <laughs> oh, okay, so anyway, oh, you want to know his full name? I, I'm so glad you asked. Okay, so he is a bird hunting dog. And so he is going to be trained to be in field trials. And when they're in field trials, like horse races, um, they have fancy names. And so his name is King Solomon of Maximilian because his father is a champion uh, field trial hunter. And his name was Maximilian. And his mom's name was Ginger, which is the cutest name, right? They are Britneys. They are Britneys. I'll try to flash a picture of him right here he's all legs right now I don't know he's like three months but he's all legs and it's hilarious because like he's not even sure where to put his legs when he tries to sit up it's so cute but anyway yeah and he scratched or bit my face I don't know what he did but the point of that is you have to think about what Solomon the author of the Proverbs was trying to say to the original audience which was the brothers or the son not the brothers the son <laughs> to the son so he wasn't writing this to Nikki Drake he was writing this thousands of years ago to the sun, okay? So you have to observe the details through your eyes of what you see, the, the facts, exactly what it says, but then you also have to observe it through the author's eyes, through Solomon, and through the audience's eyes, who is the sun, okay? And once you do that, then you can reflect on what you learned and you can figure out how to apply this to your own life. And that is the ACTS acronym that I have in this book. Makes it super simple to help you remember and realize what you learned and then how you can turn it into a prayer back to God. Because when we are done studying his word, whenever we start studying his word, we pray. But also when we are done studying his word, we need to end it in prayer and let him know what we learned. Now, does he know what you learned? Yes, he does. He knows everything, unfortunately. Sometimes, unfortunately, yes, he knows everything. But but he wants to hear it from you. So he wants you to pray this back. And so this respond page just gave you a super easy way to be able to respond back to him. Now, with that being said, we will stop this video and we will start again with chapter 3, verse 27. And I will go through all of this info with you. Um, if you want to get the book, it's down in the Amazon link that's below. If you want to get the uh, Proverbs Bible journaling kit that has, I think it's 17 pages of tips and stickers and things that you can color um, and put into your book, then that is a link below to the markers that I use, the Bible that I suggested, all of those things. If they're not linked below, there's a link that takes you to my website. Make sure you go to my website and check it out. There's so many 
goodies there. Some you have to pay for. A lot are free. Um, if you want to become a member and go through a Bible study with me, book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, then you're definitely going to want to join the Crazy Simple Study students. And we, we usually are the sisters, but I've had a few guys join and maybe even I have a teenager or two. I'm not certain. They don't tell me their age when they shine up, shine up, shine up. Shine. Okay. When they sign up, but, 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 the, the ladies meet together on Zoom and the ladies meet together on Slack and chat and it's so fun. It's so fun. So I hope that you'll consider checking that out and joining us for that um, because we're going through 1 Corinthians right now. And if you are a premium member, you can go back through all of the previous Bible studies and have access to all of the stuff, all of the things to do the study on your own if you'd like. So I will see you in the next video. Bye!